On today's pod, Josh and I are going to hit on the Vanity Fair photographs, if Kylo Ren can be redeemed and how it would look, and as always, we share a follower's collection, give a collector's tip, and share a Star Wars Easter egg with you. We also have an exciting BMB giveaway that we'll share and how you can get your hands on one of the coveted complete Target exclusive retro set figures. The Force runs strong with this pod. Pass on what you're about to learn. What up, Josh? Ho! Oh, what's going on, Andy? Shout out to the BMB. BMB. Welcome to the Hall of Chronicles, episode sixteen. <laughs> Woo! Uh, we really appreciate you uh, listening to us right now. Uh, make sure you follow us on. Twitter at Holo Chronicles, Instagram and YouTube at Holo Chronicles. You can also find us on all the major uh, podcast platforms. So go ahead, take a look. Holo Chronicles. Josh, who are the BMB? Uh, I believe that's the Blue Milk Brigade. Right, and the Blue Milk Brigade is anybody that follows us or is within earshot of our voices. Congratulations, you are a part of the BMB, and because. We love you guys so much. We are doing something first time. This is fantastic. First time I'm on the podcast. pretty excited about this. First time uh, that we're going to try this. Uh, we are going to do an exclusive Blue Milk Brigade giveaway Woo! to one of our faithful listeners or followers. All you have to do is follow us on Twitter and retweet this podcast. Is that it? Using the hashtag retro and you know what that could put you in line for josh what andy that could put you in line for one of those very most coveted target exclusive retro figures complete set six figure complete set currently six figures currently in this complete set you're gonna get a han you're gonna get a chewy how about a luke you're gonna get a luke what you're going to get a Leia. Huh? You're going to get a Vader, and you're going to get a Stormtrooper. And we put up a poll last week um, that just asked, how available have these figures been where you live? And, you know, people that listen to this are actually scattered all over the place. We we have listeners sure. from all around. Yeah. And... Uh, there was about 112, 114 people that responded. It was just a day long poll. Right. And uh, about 52% of them said, I'm striking out. We can't find them anywhere. Um, anytime we go to Target, they're always gone. And yet, that 52% is actually higher, Josh. Now, I know it's because. What are you saying? I'm a math teacher, right? <laughs> At heart, and I'm always going to work the numbers here. About thirty percent of that poll said that they don't collect, um, or that they don't collect these figures. So really, that fifty-two percent is much, much greater, uh, is a much greater percentage to the people that actually collect these. It's more like seventy-five okay. percent of those that collect have been unable to find them, and you know we, I think, are at an advantage because we live in a smaller town. Right, that the target that we go to, not as many people would be, you know, afforded the opportunity to get those figures, and or you know, just a, a smaller uh, cross section of collectors, really. Yeah, and so um, we have been fortunate enough to find some at our own local target. But to our credit, Josh, I'll give us a little bit of credit a here. Bit. You have uh, visited many targets south of us, right? And I have visited many targets north of us. Right. I like to call this the fleecing of Target. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> and we're not doing it to hoard. No. Nope. We're n- absolutely we're, not. Um, we have gotten sets for friends of ours who are collectors. Um, we have used them in trades. 
Um, and yeah, a big trade. I had a big trade. I, I mean, I had a commitment that I made like two months ago I had to fulfill with yes, these retro did. sets. And thank goodness for the uh, availability I and, had in my area. And just as, a, as an aside here, Josh, what did you get for a complete set? I got a signed Eunice Chewbacca, you know, in, in person... Uh, autograph on on a Chewbacca photo, which is fantastic. That's pretty cool. That's worth yeah. a that's worth yeah, a it was. Set. And, and uh, shout out to uh, Matt, <laughs> always favorite listener, Matt. Yeah, we love Matt. Yes, um, uh, so, but well worth it. And you know, and and uh, it was a good it was a good pull from Matt to say like, hey man, why don't you t- try and grab these? And then the pressure was on, and so <laughs> which I appreciate because that led us to to really. I mean, both of us were going out and trying to fulfill that order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then what we ended up hap- what ended up happening too is we got a few extra sets. Yeah, um, and what we would like to do is get one of those sets to uh, a listener or a follower that has been unable to get um, a set or any just find any sure. figures at yeah. all. And so what we are going to ask of you guys is a little bit of honesty. If you've already got some figures or if you've already gotten your set to um, go ahead and, and uh, retweet the pod. We're never sure. going to tell you not to do that. Please. But um, Absolutely, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, don't use the hashtag retro, and we'll just know that you're just you're just uh, hooking us up and helping us out. Or use it and make sure you pass it on, because yeah. that's what we're doing. Okay, that, I'm cool with that, yeah. too. If you, if you end up winning the set, um, and we will announce the winner on our next podcast, which will be probably a week from now, hopefully, um, we'll announce the, the winner... And then um, we'll have to uh, figure out how to get these to you. Ah, oh, no problem. And we'll hit you up with the DM on Twitter. And you know, if you're not on Twitter, no problem. Just uh, you can find us, uh, you know, holochronicles at gmail dot com. That's fine too, or or whatever. Uh, find a friend that has Twitter. I don't know. I don't yeah, talk them right. into talk them into tweeting at us or DMing us. But no, the the main thing is we're super excited about this. This is an awesome collection awesome set they're totally am, cool they are the coolest like i don't know re- release i don't know if you call them a re-release they're they're a uh, reinvented release of the retro figures like andy spelled out uh <laughs> they're kind of goofy I-, I like the goofy uh, uh like taylor made worn corners <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah hilarious yeah they are yeah. they are distressed intentionally as to right. not mistake them for sure the originals the originals and, because and they're, they're that good and they even have a big stamp that says you know retro retro collection them. yeah collection we're actually looking at them right now we've got them splayed out on the table we've got somebody's collection splayed out on the table right now and all you have to do is retweet. Just tweet us up. Retweet, hashtag retro. And uh, if you want to tell us why you think you're deserving of these, uh, go ahead. We'd, sure. love to, we'd love to hear your sad, sad story and why you can't <laughs> why you can't find any target figures. And of course, like or subscribe to our podcast or, or whatever. We, we just appreciate it. Speaking of, Josh, we are at this moment two followers well, away. Check. Two followers away from 500. I feel like that's a big deal. Is that still there? Hold on. Let's see. Maybe it happened while we were... While we were Two followers away. <laughs> we're still two followers yeah. away. Okay. Half an hour didn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're two away. I feel like that's that's kind of momentous. I feel like that's a sure. benchmark on Twitter. I think if you go back to uh, Hollow Chronicles episode one, we joked about getting 100 followers. You know, and it's only been, what, a three or four months. So uh, we're excited. Not since January. So it's been five months. Uh, I was trying to make it seem like we were better. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's been it's been a while. Uh but we appreciate you. We love we love doing this. And I got to tell you, I don't know. I'm going off script here. Okay, but I have it, to tell you, do it, do it. Is that I have never been so more in tune. Like I had my own Star Wars little little you know sphere that was just me, and then you know you came along. And we started talking about it. But to get into the Twitter and to listen to all these different podcasts, we have some favorite podcasts out there. We love these podcasters. Yeah, there's in my eyes, there's no competition. We just it's not competition. We love consuming other podcasts. Oh, for sure. Uh, We and and sharing and the excitement and maybe extrapolating on a topic they didn't or hearing a topic we didn't extrapolate on. It's so fantastic. I love it. So uh, thank you to to the community. We're a positive podcast for Star Wars, and we. Love you guys. That's why we're giving away a totally awesome set, and, and we're super excited. And don't underestimate, Josh. Do not underestimate that Tarkin figure that you can find in the board <sighs> game. It's very cool. That's a little off script, too. I have to tell you that in the midst of our retro set, we have the Tarkin 
retro figure who, by the way, obviously wasn't part of the original vintage collection, but he looks so good. It's very cool. He's my favorite by far, obviously, because he's new. But the way they did his uh, uh, his action figure is fantastic. His card is fantastic. Yeah, I see. Now, I didn't know he was on a card until this last week. Because right. Because you only see him in the box. But And by the way, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, there's a, a limited edition or a Target exclusive Star Wars Death Star Escape board game that includes this retro action figure Tarkin. And it is hard to find. Mm-hmm. Almost harder to find than the uh, the uh, retro set. Not not as much because you have six versus one. Yeah. But uh, we we were fortunate enough to get our hands on one. I got one laying on the table right now. It's pretty sweet. Woo! That so, it might maybe be. our next. Maybe if we get to six hundred, we'll pull that one out. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna hold that one in reserve. Uh, we may or may not have an extra for uh, for our fifteen mm. hundredth uh, uh, listener. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll cross that bridge when we get yeah, to it. Yeah. Josh, how about some news? Let's do it. Star Wars news. The biggest news from the last week is, of course, Ooh. the Vanity Fair article with about 13 or 14 photographs from the very famous Annie Leibovitz, who's taken pictures uh, for Star Wars articles and movies over the years. She's well, she's got an eye, Josh. She does. And these pictures, uh, whether you're excited about Episode Nine or you're not excited about Episode Nine, you're excited. Yeah, you're definitely excited. Don't lie. These pictures are great. They're beautiful. They're um, you. You get a little behind the scenes look in some of them, which I always like. Sure, with Abrams in there. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, yeah, looking like uh, Leonard Hofstetter. Um, <laughs> 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 Shout out to the Big Bang. Woo. Um, but I just I wanted to go through uh, some of the pictures and some of their captions underneath. You know, obviously, you if you haven't already, listeners out there, you should go read the article and see the pictures in the context of the article because that's informative and right. and it's that's the best way to do it. But what I want to do is break down a couple of these pictures um, and uh, and and maybe get give uh, maybe a prediction of some screen time. All right. Um, how much screen time okay. these things are going to get. So number one, big thing, big takeaway from that article is that the Knights of Ren are back. Wow. <laughs> Woo! They are so back. Yes. And I was so bummed that they didn't show up more than just in that vision. Right. Which In Force Awakens. In Force Awakens, which somebody posited that it was a flash forward. Mm. Not a someone flashback. posited. Someone posited Who did? on Twitter. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I like that idea a lot, though. That's funny. Um, but the Knights of Ren, you could see them very clearly in the desert sun. They were on um, this uh, planet that is called Pasana. It's a desert planet. It's not Jakku. It's not Tatooine. It's not Jeddah. It's just proof that the galaxy. Is bigger than you think. Is low on moisture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but the Knights of Ren are back. And one thing that I noticed, Josh, not just that they were all dressed in dark and they looked fierce and mean and thuggish, but there were six of them. And why is that important? Because there were six bounty hunters that mm. Vader employed mm. to go do some of his... You know, go do some work for him. Little callback. Kylo has these six Knights of Ren. And maybe there were more at one time. Maybe there weren't. Um, maybe but, there's seven. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we know how much Kylo wants to emulate Vader. And I couldn't help but see a connection there. There were six bounty hunters on, you know, in Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Um, only one of which in the movies was very effective, and then he died abruptly in Return sure, of the Jedi. Sure. But um, there are also ineffective. <laughs> there are also six Knights of Ren, and I couldn't help but see the symmetry there. Um, yeah, it's very between cool. old trilogy, original trilogy, and sequel trilogy, which I know JJ likes to do. He yeah. likes to bring you know call back to the. To the vintage stuff, so um, I appreciated that. I'm excited to see them and what they are. And there's a lot of for yeah. And there's a lot of questions flying on Twitter, you know, about 
you know, the weapons are the same as the vision from Force Awakens. I know we spent some time on that vision. Uh, I don't know if we did it on the pod, but we did it offline of like what it meant when we were coming up with uh, the Andes Manifesto. Episode 11 of the podcast. <laughs> yes. It'd go back and listen 11 to 11 or 12. Right? It was is number 11. Is it 11? Yeah, I made uh, sure I'd remember that. There it is. That. So, um, and then seeing those guys, like you said, in the desert sun, what I liked about the picture, I'll go a little more just aesthetically looking at the picture is that three of them are staring right at the camera, kind of badass like. Yeah. Like, and then the back of that one, you know, I was just like, that's like, fantastic. Check me out. Yeah. And the cool gun that looks like his arms, either his arm is a gun or his arms in the gun. Yeah. I don't know. It awesome. Looked pretty cool. Which which also lends to a few of the questions like are they are they saber wielders? But I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think they so. are. They're not with that, not with that armament. Yeah. And so my question to you, Josh, over under Five minutes of screen time for the Knights of Ren in episode nine. I'll go over on that. You're going over. I'm going over just because of the teaser trailer and uh, what I call the Red Woods when, you know, you have the red background with Kylo, you know, fist punching the guy in the chest with his... Giving him the rock bottom. Giving the rock bottom, dropping him down. I, I think that either... Well, I'll get to that later, but I, th- I think that that is a Knights of Ren scene right there. Okay. All right. So you're going over on five minutes. I, I, well, I mean, you know, five... It feels like five minutes. I'm going over on feeling like five minutes. It could be two. I'm, I don't know. I'm going actual seconds here. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you don't think the Knights of Ren exist at all from well, seconds? No, no, no. I haven't given mine. I'm just asking you. What do you think? Five minutes over. Over. You're taking yeah. the over. They're a part of the... They're okay. A, they're a part of the story. I, I don't have a good reason for I, that yet. I hope they're over five minutes. Good. Okay. That's what, that's what I'm hoping. All right. Next... Um, in the article, there was another mention that this is the end to the Skywalker saga. Right. Okay. They're really hammering this point. It's the end of the Skywalker saga. It's the end. And yet they name it the Rise of Skywalker. So right. it seems there's y- they're yin and yang in us here. They're dark and light side in us with this I agree. It being the end, but the rise. And I don't know. I Well... You could always say, I don't, I don't know. It's too muddy right now. <laughs> you could always say, I mean, what's what's Kylo's last name? It's, it's not Ren. <laughs> <laughs> it's Solo. It's Solo. So I, I don't know. I don't know where that's going. We don't know Ray's last name. You know, just a couple of drunk junkers. <laughs> and uh, Ray Smith. <laughs> Ray Smith. Did I say Raylo? My bad. Ray Lewis? <laughs> I think it's Raylo. I've seen so many Raylo tweets that I can't even call her Ray anymore. Um so yeah, there's just again, they brought it back up. It's the, you know, bringing an end to the Skywalker So that's saga. interesting. I don't get it. Yeah, so that makes I mean, just without thinking about it, if you're going to say this is the end of the Skywalker saga, Ben dies, Leia dies. There's no more Skywalkers. Mm-hmm. And yet somehow there is a rise, there's a resurrection of Skywalker. So which could go back to blah blah blah. We've talked about it already. Is yeah. that Skywalker is a is a uh, a feel or a movement more than a name? Yeah. So we'll see. All right. Next picture. Uh, it was of the Carrie Russell as Zori Bliss, aka a scoundrel. And I thought the outfit was fantastic. It the, was the costume phenomenal. was very cool. That was a picture I paused on longer. Just because I was like, who? I don't know who this is. Yeah, look a little Rocket Manny. You know, it was awesome. So I don't, I don't. It was cool. You know what it made me think of was Kira from Solo. Okay, how she was a badass chick, but she dressed, you know, yeah, to the nines, to the nines. And so the helmet was gold. Perfect. Like it was. The it was very. Was very cool. Very. Uh, uh, what would you say? Um, oh gosh, I, I'm trying to go with. Upper class. It's an upper class blaster. Yeah, it's you know. uptown. Yeah. It's um, a Lando blaster, we call it. It's yeah. And so um as cool as Zori Bliss looks, and as much as I like Carrie Russell as an actress, um over under five minutes of screen time. Under. Under. Yeah. I'm taking the Kinda under like, as yeah, well. Under. Five minutes. That's not a lot. It's a lot in movie time. It is a lot in movie time. Like I don't know. She could, she could duck in and out. I, I heard some good theories on other great pods, you know. So I don't want to bring those up because you should go listen to them. But uh. <laughs> um, next, 
Yeah. Allegiant General Pride. That guy looks awesome. Richard E. Grant. Yeah. Um, you know, he was wearing kind of a kind of a kind of a cloaky slash cape. Can they come up with more military positions? <laughs> I mean, the name's re- a regent. Allegiant. I, Allegiant, General. sorry. Allegiant General. So, yeah. Probably pretty up, upsta- you know, high up the list. And I mean, where does that rank with first governor? order? Governor, <laughs> hmm. it's probably like higher. Tarkin. Well, governor's more How about political. Duke? The mm. Archduke. Archduke. Um, but again, you know, of course, very cool. Picture. Richard E. Grant. It, I mean, the very the the moment he was announced as a as a you know as a character in the last episode. Um, I knew. I mean, me. It, he's it, a bad guy. He's yeah. bad. He's got to yeah. be a bad guy. He's going to be a bad guy. He's yeah. not, Wasn't I mean, he John Wick? Is that the movie? No. I forget. No. I think it's one of the John Wicks. I don't think he's in John no. Wick. Hey, we can look it up. We can look it up. Um, but yeah, bad guy. Uh, another bad guy that wears a cloak or a cape or some sort or of a, uh, poncho. Or a lapel fold over Gray uh, suit, poncho. Yes. <laughs> um, over under five minutes? Uh, I don't know about that he might show up uh, maybe a cumulative five minutes i don't think he's gonna go you know back to back but if he's you know if he's commanding a ship doing a ground assault i'll go i'll go over okay i got the under on that one do you all right yep sorry richard e grant carrie russell as much as i would love for you to be on the screen a lot i just have a feeling you're not gonna get a lot of screen time because sure this movie's not about you guys (laughs) um all right Side note, Billy D. Williams is 82 years old. For some reason, I that blew me away. I didn't think he was that old. Really? I thought he was younger. I like when like I, Carrie Fisher is 60 when she passed away. What? So that it, yeah, that is interesting because Lando does not look old in the movies. That guy's fresh. Probably he doesn't look older than 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 Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. I know. And he is. And how old is Harrison Ford? He's, He's in his eighties, seventy six yeah, or something right. like that. Well, I mean, they're within six or seven years. It's all those Colt forty fives. They have life redeeming qualities. Yeah, they do. They keep him living. All right. Anyway, I just I just wanted to throw that in because I was surprised to learn that he was older than I thought he was. Okay. Um, next picture. Well, not a picture, but something uh, quoted in the article said Anthony Daniels says C three PO does something surprising in this movie. Okay. Okay. So for me, initially, my initial thought when I read that was, you know how there was the, uh, the, um, the poster, the teaser poster that came out that everyone, um, freaked out about just probably a couple months ago and C-3PO is holding Chewbacca's bowcaster. Oh, I didn't see that. What? I didn't see that. You didn't see that. Is that for Rise of Skywalker before they had the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was. I didn't know if that was fan BS or what. I know that's the thing. It it looked like it could be fan made. It also looked like it could be just a ensemble poster. Okay. You know, leading up to episode because it had all the major players in it. No, but it had C three PO holding Chewie's bowcaster, like in a still image. Yeah, crazy. You can you can look this up. I will. Um, but. a side note, a picture of C-3PO. He is in all beautiful gold. There's no spare arm parts. There's no spare leg parts. He sure. is solid gold, just like the 80s TV show. Nice. Um, for the first time in a while, right? right. He's, he's had some missing pieces for the last couple movies uh, that he's been pieced together, the red arm specifically, but he looked sharp. He looked bright gold in the desert there. Um, and then, of course, in the trailer, you see him, you know, Grasping on to yeah, a, doing a full a mass Jack Sparrow in the desert, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, for me, when it said you know Anthony Daniels, he said he's going to do something surprising. Well, what could C three PO do? Cuss. He's going to say a foul word. He's going to say a foul word. That would be surprising. <laughs> That'd be a little out of character. He's um, a protocol droid. He shooting just broke protocol. Shooting a blaster would be of any sort would be out of character. How about a two handed saber hold? Holding a lightsaber? <laughs> uh, oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. I I, I don't put no, that very high no. on my list of possibilities. No. You mean 3PPO? Three 3PPO. Three that was awesome. See 3PO and Ray do a uh, like a back-to-back you know, throne room attack with each other? No? That, that would definitely be surprising. 
By the way, uh, if you also want to win the retro set, hashtag PPO. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do, do that. not do that. Oh, don't do that. We will you not do it. put you in the drawing. Instant winner. Uh, okay. Um, then we have a picture of Finn and the character Jana on dressed up horses. Did you see those? Those are cool. Those creatures. Yeah, and I saw the behind the scenes clip of the you know the horse with the green you know felt you know fabric on their face. That was those are that's a cool pick. Yeah, th- some people say eh, that looks kind of cheesy. I'm like, no. I'll tell you the one thing. I'll <laughs> I'll give you the one thing that drew me back a little bit was like, oh man, are we doing the are we doing the casino horse racing thing again? I don't want to do that again. Yeah, they're not gonna do. They're that not again. gonna do that. All again. right, thank you. No, they're gonna use those to uh, get around on that. Deserty planet there. They're cool looking though. Kind um Tusky. Then one picture, one shot uh that got a lot of heat, a lot of buzz. Um Ray and Kylo crossing swords in a rainy watery scene. Um looks like they're on for, to me, they look like they're on Death Star Ruins, uh lightsaber and I agree with that. There's no I what's funny though is we were just talking about it before the pod was some of the theories that were out there. What was your favorite one? That it was a uh, that I, I thought it would be intriguing, although I never think they would actually do it. <laughs> Excuse you, and thank you. It, that it was that they were crossing lightsabers atop an overturned Millennium Falcon. I don't know. Mm. They might as well be crossing lightsabers on Han Solo's grave. Come on. I mean, essentially. No, it's the Death Star. There's waves crashing in the trailer. That seems a to make... wet environment. Yeah, that seems right? to make the most sense. Please. That seems to make the most sense. So that's what that's what I'm going with for now, until otherwise noted. Um, there was a picture of Chewie and Ray and BB-8 kind of bumping around on a skiff. It, it was cool because it was a skiff that was on like four wheels. It looked like yeah. they'd just taken the shell off of a car and put a skiff on top of it. Um, and so magic. So from that picture, you get the you get the other half of the group from the trailer. From the trailer, yeah. So you got Chewie Ray and BB-8 in one skiff, you know, bombing around on this planet. W- meanwhile, you've got Poe and Finn and 3PO on the other skiff bombing around. They must have gotten... Sp- I'm going to say that they've gotten split up while being pursued by the First Order. I think and- it's kind of a speeder bike callback, huh? Little Luke and Leia, maybe in under, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe, maybe. But uh, you know, while they were all together at one point on this planet, they have split up, probably by necessity, and they're both in kind of some skiffs trying to get away. I'm, sure. I'm thinking that's that's what my thought is. Uh, with all the lasers and the running, I I'm gonna buy into that. <laughs> and the troopers with backpacks that make them fly. I call them the Harry Potters as they come launching out of there. They do kind of look like they're on Quidditch six. <laughs> The uh, uh, fire bolts. Quidditch trooper. <laughs> the Quidditch troopers. That's funny. It is. That's funny, Josh. Hashtag Quidditch trooper. Now, Josh, you wanted to bring up something that you noticed about Kylo Ren in that red forest scene. Yeah, so that's from the original teaser. And the only thing is that the juices are flowing as we talk about some of as some of the theories, especially on uh, social networking, is coming through. And we're talking about maybe... Ray being connected. What do we have? Uh, how, should we dive in there? Or are we just going to get hate mail for that? I don't know. Anyway, one thing I looked. Uh-huh. Yeah, one thing I looked uh-huh. for was was okay. Let's say the Knights of Ren really spurned this. Is that we saw the vision and Force Awakens of the Knights of Ren, and they had just killed a guy with the, kind of that bucket helmet. You know, mm-hmm. the big the big bowl on his head. Yeah, it kind of looked like a cloud car trooper helmet. Right. Right. Um, if you get the reference, a little rounder, but yeah, yeah. And then in the teaser trailer for Rise of Skywalker, we have Kylo barreling through the woods with the red background, and he, you know, uh, and he's uh, got a trooper with him. He's got a trooper, at with least him, one, and he hilt punches one guy. See, so that might just take this all away. He hilt the trooper. Actually, I didn't connect that, but he hilt punches a guy who also kind of has a similar helmet, and so I don't know if. But it might actually bring validity to the flash forward topic you just brought up. But what I was looking for was was there a scar on Kylo's face? So is it a flashback or a flash forward or just a flash of awesome Kylo sword work? Yeah. So I don't know. so maybe he does have the scar. You just can't really you couldn't. distinctly see. So it. I big screened it and 1080p'd it and tried to you know uh, 
zoom in and couldn't see if there was a scar or not. So well, that's interesting because, you know, if there isn't a scar, <laughs> that obviously changes the context of the scene, right? Everybody... That's all I was going for. Is, is that a flashback moment to uh, tie in with the vision from Force Awakens uh, where we don't know if Rey is, like, being herself right then, like, like in the vision or if she's younger or whatever. So I'm just trying to tie back to your manifesto. That's all. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, speaking of, there was a there was a rumor leak this morning or last night that uh, Ray and Kylo are half siblings. Yeah, that's a big one going around right now. Half siblings, and that uh, that would have meant um, most likely that Han. The reason why, you know, a reason possibly that uh, Han and Leia are, are not together in The Force Awakens is that Han had a little side piece action. And uh, I just... Here's here's my issue with that. And, I, I have issue yeah, with it too, but go ahead. I, I just... Well, and you're going to have the same issue. I just don't... For one thing, it doesn't fit... It, it wouldn't fit well into the genre, uh, Star Wars at all. It, it Adultery? Right. <laughs> right? For number two, Disney. Yeah. Probably a little against adultery. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, a yeah. little bit. We got stepmoms and stuff going on, but other than that, Disney not so. I I I don't like that. I think I think it should be something. If if there is a connection, you know, uh, family tree wise, I don't think that's it. Yeah. The for me, that would be pre- to me that would be pretty out of character for Han Solo. Now, he is. A rogue, right? He right. he marches to the beat of his own drum. He doesn't like taking orders. He has always been that way. But from the moment he meets Leia, he's hooked. And he always has been. And even in the books, he had opportunities sure. to get other girlfriends before they were together. Or even just like... Play it up like, oh, we've never had the commitment talk before, Leia. What do you mean? How do you expect me to? And we you know, think that Ray is younger than Kylo, right? By about ten years, right? So, I mean, that would mean into their relationship, deep into their relationship. So, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't buy that, and I that don't would buy not either. be a good. That would not be a good look back on and Han and Leia's. There's no way that happens. Let me no. just put it that way. Uh, I mean. So that debunked. might that might actually be one of the few things debunked that would, would make me upset if yeah, it were I'd be true. Ticked off. No, I'd be upset no. with that. I mean, I understand that Han was obsessed in some of the books that you read, and I don't know if they're canon anymore, but Han was obsessed with helping Chewie, you know, with with his planet and and all that. But I don't no, that was aftermaths. So that's canon. No, he would they were already building Han kind of departing from Leia just in his obsession to help Chewie. So I I don't know. All right, so to wrap a bow on on this part of the let's uh, do it. Uh, go go read the Vanity Fair article. Go look at the pictures, beautiful, and admire them, and and thank the Lord above for Annie Leibovitz and her uh, her ability to take stunning visuals. Now, I will say this, kind of as a PS, somebody put that out there. There have been bait and switches before on the images that you see, and there was a. Who tweeted, like, if you look at these two pictures, a picture of Kylo and Ray kind of standing on the rock formations as the covers, mm-hmm. that there are clues in that picture. There are very distinct clues in that picture. Clues to what, Josh? One of them being that you don't see either of their right hands. Hello? Uh, because they both get cut off. Right. They just do a, one <laughs> hell of a saber move and where they cut each other's hands off. Uh, and then I don't know what the other ones are. We couldn't figure it. Somebody was tying the words on the Vanity Fair cover together to form like something ridiculous that didn't mm. make any sense. An anagram, perhaps. There you go. All right, so go read that and uh, marvel at it, please. Easter eggs. Before we get to the Easter egg that I've got for us here, Josh, um, we want to shout out to the uh, Beyond the Blast Doors. Yeah, big shout out to them. They had a very cool um, Easter egg. Other that... David did. <laughs> Other David did. Yeah. Um, he he posted on uh, Twitter um, the other day that... No, he, they put it in the pod on Sunday. Okay, well, it was, it was a Twitter oh, post Twitter, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's how I first saw it. But um, that John Wayne, legendary 
cowboy actor, John Wayne. Um, who died in 1979. Who died in 1979, voiced a part for Star Wars. New Hope, yep. And it was the uh, elephant nose Garindian um, creature that they just kind of messed with, you know. They, so it was stock audio. Stock audio that they just messed Modulated with. Modulated and it went... That's I don't I can't even imitate it, but yeah, it was very. <laughs> that was him and his. But right mom. before he died, he had a he was credited with a voice part. Yeah, um, and it was officially the last movie he was in. So the reason I feel like we bring this up is because we're in an awesome community, and I love all the other podcasts out there. As a matter of fact, what do we do? We subscribe to like fifteen of them just to kind of listen and realize that. There are people out there just like us that are thinking their own thoughts and coming up with their own things. And so thank you to the Beyond the Blasters. And by the way, we we got a little side relationship with them, talking on the DMs. Those guys are awesome. And yeah, they will, you good know, dudes. And listen to them, man. Rapid fire. You can't keep up with David, I'll tell you that much. That guy will professionally put you through a pod before you even know it. <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> Thanks, David. So our Easter egg for today um, deals with... THX 1138. Sure. And that, um, if you know George Lucas at all, that was the very first movie that he made. Um, it was a kind of a sci fi th- thriller. Well, it wasn't really a thriller. I've seen it. It's kind of slow going, but sure. Um, that was his first movie. And because there's a lot of uh, gratitude towards George Lucas and the genre he has helped build uh, in the sci fi community, there's a lot of tip offs to THX-1138, specifically the numbers 1138. For example, Josh, General Riken issues the order to send rogues 10 and 11 to station 38. Ooh. So 1138. Mm. There you go. Um, I get it. When Han and Luke and Chewie go to rescue... The Princess Leia in the Death Star, she is held in cell block 1138. Amazing. Perfect <laughs> THX clarity. <laughs> 1138 is painted on the side, although you you can't really see it in the movie. It is credited that the numbers 1138 is painted on the side of Leia's um Boosh disguise. Okay. When she, you know, goes to free Han from the Carbonite and Jabba's. In the carbonite. <laughs> it's pretty close to Emperor, actually. Yeah, it's not too far it's off. Not too far off, I'll tell you. It's all right. Your, your eyesight will return. Your eyesight will return. Um in The Phantom Menace, uh there is a droid who is facing Jar Jar Binks, but his back is toward the camera, and at the top of his little backpack area, there are the numbers uh, 1138. Yeah. Plain as day. It's right there. Boom. Boom. There's also a reference in the Clone Wars cartoon, mm-hmm. uh, episode Clone Cadets. Uh, there was an order to put the Domino Squad to the test in a kind of a... I don't know, an infantry training drill kind of thing. Commander Colt gives the order to run Citadel Challenge in version THX, variable 1138. Version TX, THX, jeez. That's pretty blatant, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, you yeah. know. It's subtly uh, there, huh? Yeah, there's also um, there's references to THX 1138 in other movies, but these are the ones in the Star Wars uh, movies themselves. By the way, cool fact in the Vanity Fair article, if you want to go back, tie back, is that Lucas was pegged, and I won't say the movie because I can't remember it, but he was pegged to do a more mainstream movie and instead came in with Star Wars. And so if he had kind of gone the easy route, we wouldn't have what we have today. And he wrote his own movie, which is fantastic. Yeah, he did uh, American Graffiti. He did that, but there was another one. And read the article because it'll it'll clue you in because they make a very distinct connection there. Like Lucas was supposed to do this and he came in with Star Wars. Oh, he was supposed to do something and he couldn't get the rights to it or something, so he just wrote his own story and it was Star Wars, which is awesome. Boom. There you go. You can go your own way, George. Don't go away. (laughs) 
All right. We had an excellent collection that we uh, featured on Saturday's hashtag show me your collection. Show me your collection. This week's collection was brought to you and me and us by Steve at Steve B. Chu. That's at S-T-E-V-E-B-C-H-U. At Steve B. Chu. His collection was rad. It was fantastic. But more rad was what he did with his collection. Right. Because he not only set up displays where there was like uh, Han and Luke playing a video game and some stormtroopers playing on the video game adjacent, um, but he built comics right. out of his scenery. It was crazy. It was totally cool. I have... I've not seen... Now, I've seen people put up cool scenes with with their collections and sure. and even you know even you and I we kind of set our stuff yeah, up and, and recreate and um but this was uh this was another level it was this like was full creation like, full creation yeah. yeah and and the comic that he shared with us um you know has a tie into this weekend memorial day it was yep. perfect the was great. the symmetry with all of it um he uh, his his comic that he shared with us had to do with the surrender at World War II or of World War II, right? And uh, I I implore you to go back and look up the hashtag, show me your collection, uh, where you can see many of our featured collections from um, followers of the Hall of Chronicles. Uh, but this was really cool and it was unique and and it was well done. Someone that cared about their collection and made a little more. I love the video game sequence. That's that's fun to me. That's just <laughs> yeah. fantastic. You know? Yeah. And, and to imagine to be able to, like, look, as a collector, the number one reason you collect is because you love what you're collecting. But mm-hmm. the number two reason is to show other people. <laughs> yes. And it's fun. Yes. And to show them something that's entertaining and be like, well, you don't understand Star Wars, but you may understand... Uh, good guys and bad guys playing video games against each other. You know that's fantastic. <laughs> trying to trying, trying to, to beat each other, up each other on points. the high score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I loved it. So thank you at Steve B. Chu. Um, thank you, Steve, for sharing. Yeah. Thank you, thank and, you. And uh, keep the comics rolling, man. Those are that that was really cool. I would love to see more. And uh, your contribution uh, to the Star Wars universe is is pretty cool. Yep, so I appreciate Agreed. that. We. Appreciate that. Hello, what have we here? Collector tip. So, Josh, before we get to the collector tip, have you gotten anything lately? I have. Share. Do it's share. It's been a good week and a half. I don't know. It's been almost two weeks. We got called out on that, but yeah, it's been. Uh, I went on a bit of a run. Obviously, we already talked about the uh, fleecing of Target. That was that <laughs> Tar- was enough. The fleecing of Targets. Targetsa. Yeah, maybe about seven across a pretty wide. I mean, we don't get us wrong. It's not like we live in a metropolis area, all right? No, we, we do got not. We have to drive south, but my particular uh, work takes me all over, and so I was stopping at many, many targets. Now, here's kind of a side collector collector tip we've used before: befriend your stock boy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And when you walk up to that person, because. Uh, if you didn't know this, quick side fact, all the retro figures in Target are not in the toy section. Why would they be in the toy section as toys? Of course not. Yeah. They are in the men's clothing section on a Father's Day kiosk on the back. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not facing the not aisle. Not <laughs> facing the aisle. It's l- ridiculous. Yeah. And so we found that out the first day by talking to, or I did, to talking to a stock guy or stock i won't call him boy he was a full-grown man stock man <laughs> that uh he looked at it and he said oh wow these aren't even stocked in the toy aisle and so we kind of learned that the codes that they use to stock them are over in the men's section so then i knew from then on and i would kind of i play a little naive with the stock people and be like oh do you have any of these and then they'd be like oh and they go to the toy section i'm like oh i think they're stocked in the men's clothing section and they'd be like what and then i'd show them the number and they'd be like oh you're right i'm like oh yeah. Lucky guess. Everybody's learning. Yeah. So, uh, so befriend your uh, stock person. So, yes, the the retro figures were a big a big pull for me this week. But one we kind of alluded to is also that 
Death Star Escape game with mm-hmm. the Tarkin carded figure. Mm-hmm. They were a little tougher. I got lucky and found two and was able to pull a couple off uh, from a couple targets, but they weren't restocking those as fast. So that's okay. We got some more of those coming. But my big purchase this <laughs> week <laughs> is I kind of am stocking up on the Black Series helmets. So Those are sweet. Darth Vader, a couple of the Stormtrooper, uh, the Shock Trooper uh, from Battlefront Two. The Poe helmet, which I've been jealous of for a long... I actually have a picture of me in our fellow BM Bieber... BM Bieber, not Bieber. <laughs> no, BM Bieber? Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post that picture, I'm a BM B- Bieber uh, but of Trevor and uh, from Trevor. And so I got one of my own. And my most excited about my pre-purchase on Hasbro Pulse for Luke's helmet, which is just... The X-Wing helmet, which is just fantastic. I'm so excited for that. I'm excited for you. It's going to be hard for me not to wear that around the house for dinner. Just saying that much. <laughs> Josh, can you take your helmet off for dinner? Uh, no, the blast shield's down. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Use the force, honey. Okay. Um, well, I have... I. They came in the mail. Um, I got uh, two things at the same time, from the same person off of eBay. I got an Ewok catapult and an Ewok glider. Um, those are smaller little little toys, um, but they were... Mini rigs? I guess. Are they kind of mini rigs? <laughs> kind of close or no? I mean, I guess you could qualify them as, a, as, a, as an indoor mini rig or something. Actually, they have those, but... Um, I just, I didn't have them and, and now I do. And, and like, th- to me, it wasn't like that they had some sentimental value to them. For me, those were just like checking off a box. Right. Because I knew I didn't have them and I, and I needed them to kind of fill out parts of my collection that I don't yet have. Which means, Josh, I'm one mini rig, come to find out, I'm one mini rig away from... A complete toy set. A complete vintage toy set, huh? I'm one toy away. Now that is loose and and some carded, right? But right. But just being able to check all the boxes on, on yeah, that vintage now, line. I from... don't. I don't have every single variant of every figure. Right. I have a few of those, which is why you'll keep going. Which is why I'll never truly be done. But as far as from the '77 to '85 toy line. Um, the only thing I'm missing now is um, an Imperial Sniper, and it's from Power of the Force 1985 uh, line. And if anybody out there with an earshot has two of them and would like to sell me one, maybe for a <laughs> complete for... <laughs> retro figure set as we <laughs> totally eliminate our giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I this is this is a long time coming. And so I'm close. And I'm going to be patient about it. I'm not just going to jump on whichever one's on eBay just because it's there. I'm going to, I'll, I'll bide my time. I'm not in a hurry. Sure. Because like you said, we're never, ever going to be totally done. No. But. Um, have you seen the Black Series? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> um, but anyway, I got the catapult, got the glider, check them off my list. I feel good about it. I haven't set them up yet or anything, but. Uh, they came from Canada. Thanks, Canada Mike. Hey. And uh and I take uh, off you hoser. <laughs> and I'm and I'm two steps closer. I'm that two a boy. steps closer. All right. What do you got for our tip? Our tip today um comes from um a realization I made with over the last few weeks. Uh I really, really like the the posters, the movie posters. For the Star Wars movies. Right. I have a number of them. I don't have, obviously don't have all of them because there's a lot of them. But I have some and I really, really like them. And so I'm al- I've always got my eye out, whether it's on eBay or Craigslist or whatever, uh, for movie posters. And I found um, a pretty... And you're talking like movie posters slash banners, like large... L- of any size. Right. Of any size. Because, you know, I do have some of your standard size, but I also have one that's pretty big, and, and then I even have a banner that's massive, and so do you. Yeah. And, but anyway, um, I have found a very inexpensive 
movie poster version that's pretty cool, and I just wanted to share it with everybody out there because maybe you hadn't considered looking for movie posters under this category. And those are the IMAX movie posters. Hmm. They're different, um, especially with the new movies that have come out with Solo, Force Awakens, and The Last Jedi. Those IMAX movie posters are different than the uh, theatrical release posters that you would see in movie theaters. Right. Um, and and most of them are like pretty, they're not big. They're, you know, 9 by 13 or somewhere around those sizes. Um, but they're inexpensive, relatively speaking. They're inexpensive and uh, you can, and, and they come in like sets. So for example, the The Last Jedi has four different mm. IMAX movie posters and they're they're cool and they're pretty inexpensive and you can slap a frame on them you know again relatively cheaply and and they're they're a nice little piece of art for your wall that's cool yeah i i encourage you to go look at the IMAX posters you know just just type them in on eBay and you can go look at a bunch of them and you can get them one at a time you can get them in sets of four you can you know solo has a few different versions and uh they're they're cool. I, I plan on getting a, a couple anyway. That's a good tip. Yeah. Check out IMAX. Check it out. All right, man. We have about 10 minutes left, and I know you have one last yeah. topic. Let's do it. Okay. So in the, in the teaser to the episode uh, for this podcast, um, we, we alluded to discussing, talking about Discussing and talking, that's the same thing. I'm sure. Um, but about, we did discuss talking about it. <laughs> we have a podcast, man. <laughs> on whether or not Rilo, not Rilo, Kylo, yes. Kylo can be oh, redeemed. Yes. And if he can, how is it going to look? Because, um, actually, the Rilo, I said it too early. Because um, the pretense where I first... Well, where I see it a lot is um, in the those that feel strongly about a Rilo uh, connection in episode nine. Sure. That it's more of a, a, a romance than it is um, plutonic or or foes or anything like that. Right. But um, even Daisy Ridley has stated that Rilo can't happen under the current situation because it would not be healthy. It would not be good. Um, you know, you, right she now, already slashed his face. Yes, they are at this point enemies. Right, they are. They have conflicting um, viewpoints on what should or happen. Or maybe at least, at the very, at the very least, just they misunderstand each other right now. Yeah, they did team up together to defeat Snoke in the in his little throne room on his ship, but. Um, aside from that, they are really at odds with each other. Right. So in order for Rilo to happen, there has to be some sort of redemption. And to a larger point, um, redemption is a theme of the original trilogy, you know. And so if Ben Solo is going to be redeemed, here's what has to happen, okay? Because this is how redemption works in real life. Okay. Redemption is something that can happen in, with regular people, not just for sensitive people. Right. Okay. And when it Thank does God. happen, when it does happen, it's incredibly powerful and it takes a lot to get there. It is not a natural thing. It's it's more of a supernatural, I guess you could even argue. It's a supernatural idea that uh that that doesn't just happen. Okay. So here's what has to happen in order for Ben to be redeemed. First of all, he has to acknowledge his wrongdoing to the wronged party. Okay, he has to make some sort of acknowledgement that he was in the wrong about something, about an idea, about the first order, about Snoke. I mean, well, that's troubling because they're all dead. <laughs> Many of them are dead. Well, I mean, except for Hux. He was sorry, bro. I slammed you on the ground pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> My <yeah>. bad. <laughs> no, but I mean, Leia's dead. Han's dead. Well, Leia's not dead yet. I... Yes, but we don't have footage to support. He did that. kill his dad. Now, here's the thing. So, in Snoke's dead. Snoke is dead. Luke's dead. But see, Snoke dying actually works in the favor of redemption because that's okay. something that he did that was a positive for the galaxy. Okay. In theory. Now, Vader, um, once he became Darth Vader, 
and we are learning more and more and more about Vader. He was a bad dude. Yeah. And he did many, many atrocious things. Killed younglings to start things off. Sure. Right? I killed innumerable, innumerable amounts of, of people and people that got in his way. Even people on his own side, he would choke, force choke out because they disappointed him. Sure. Right? Um, and even in a recent comic, he lightsabered a girl that was in love with him. Right? So, like, even... That's a whole other story, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on that road, he's he's not. He really has no allies. He everybody is afraid of him because they know that they are towing life and death when they're around him. So Vader's a bad dude, but he did redeem himself not to the galaxy, not to the people that he wronged, but but to one person, his son. He redeemed himself to his son. Again, not to the galaxy. Right. So redemption can look a little different, you know, depending on your point of view. Well, it redeem- in our eyes, we were he felt redeemed. Like as the as the wa- viewer of that experience, we were inside, right? We were right. fly on the wall for. So he saved his son, and tell your sister you were right about me. Right. That there was a little piece of good in me still that came out. It doesn't erase what he did. It doesn't. Doesn't you know? It doesn't. And he's and, not. He and never yours is that redemption though. It it was to Luke. Okay. And and that was it though. Like to the rest of the galaxy, they'd probably say no. You he's know, still a, he's, he's still, still a major a hole, major bad guy, to which there's probably no forgiveness. You know that 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 would be hard to come by. How about the Tuscan Raiders? How do they feel about that guy? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, um, but in order, for, but even then, Anakin had to. Acknowledge that he was wrong. You know, the emperor was was pure evil. He was bad, and sure. so so there was an acknowledgement that he was in the wrong to his son. And that, again, that wasn't to the galaxy; it was just to his son. But he redeemed himself in a way and to, to his the, son to, and to us and to the story, and, which is fine. Exactly. So um, even if it's just an inward realization and doesn't like speak it out, he has to acknowledge. And see, this is where Kylo, there's hope for him because he acknowledges that it's there was conflict in him when it comes to his family. Right. It didn't ultimately save him from his dad, but it did save his mom. Right. From he, him. From him, right? He couldn't pull the trigger on his mom. There's conflict in him. He knows that it's not just they're bad to him. Right. There was conflict. So there's... They haven't totally made him completely off the rails, but it's just not looking good right now. Sure. Okay. Um, A lot of anger. And it it still didn't prevent him from going to the dark side after being exposed to the light side. Right. Right? So there's that. Number one, there has to be an acknowledgement of wrongdoing to the wronged party. Number two, uh, there has to be an offer of forgiveness by the wronged party. Okay, you can't redeem yourself to somebody who isn't willing to give you that second chance, right? Redemption doesn't happen if it's not a two-way street, right? You can be wanting redemption and be willing to prove yourself, but until somebody gives you that opportunity, it can't happen. So who does he have to, to offer that to? So at this point, Ray and he's Leia. got Ray and Leia, okay? That is it. So his list of people he can be redeemed to is very small. Now, unless somehow, in some way, Luke actually comes back, you know. We don't know that. I don't know what's going to happen. And there. Right. We I don't know. Not. That's speculative. And, you know, maybe it should happen. Maybe we don't want to have... I don't, I I mean, don't know Force, where you fall. Force Ghost is going to be somewhere, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, it, but really, we have Ray, sort of, and we have Leia. So, if one of them is willing to still hold out hope that there's some good in him... And as of the last Jedi, Ray was willing to do that. Ray said, "There's still conflict in him." She was saying that to Luke on the island. Now, but not at the end. By the she end of the movie, at him. she's obviously like she shuts the door on him, right? Like, like figuratively and actually shuts the door on him. So by the end of that movie, maybe not so much. But Leia is still alive. And I don't know how they reconcile that. So there is a possibility it that could it be happens. Save my son. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, yeah. 
So this is why uh, redemption is so tricky. Without the forgiveness, redemption is empty. Vader did not redeem himself to the galaxy. And I don't really even know how many people knew that Vader actually saved Luke outside of Luke's circle. Like, did that, was that a, was that a part of Luke's legend that he got his dad to save him from the Emperor? I don't see how he could, how he could, you know, sell that or propagate it across the galaxy. Right. It's because it's him, Leia, Han, Chewie, and a bunch of Ewoks. And, <laughs> and Lando. And Nub Nub is not enough. <laughs> but do you think he told like his, his new academy? There's like 12. Yep, students in that He's academy. Like, raise your hand if you know who the worst guy in the galaxy is. And they all raise their hands like, Actu- totally redeemed himself. <laughs> Actually. No, um, no, no. It doesn't so, make I mean, sense. I don't know how well known that piece of uh, information was out there in the galaxy. Did did everybody know Vader was the one who tossed Palpatine over the rail? The no. very, very small and puny rail, yeah. by the way. Yeah. A, a small child could fall over that rail. Yet again, no right? Thigh high. Why? Why? <laughs> Galactic OSHA. Why? <laughs> so, um, inside joke. Go all the way back to what number two? <laughs> My rail on railings. Um, so we don't actually know if Anakin ever forgave himself for what he did. Um, I am quite confident he never forgave himself for Padme. No. No, right? So that and that is one of the toughest parts about forgiveness is being able to forgive yourself. Um, you know, not that there won't ever be consequences for the things that you do wrong, but being able to forgive yourself to get to a place where you can move on. Like Anakin redeemed himself in front of his son and immediately died. There was no okay, so how do we do this now that you're supposed to be a good guy now, and and now I'm here, and now here's the rest of the galaxy who sees you as the bad guy. Can you spray paint my helmet white? <laughs> exactly. We never got to see that because he died immediately after. You know, Luke was willing to forgive him, which he got that lifeline I'll from. Lose the cape, I swear. One person, right? Sorry. And so that's why he only redeemed himself to the one. And so you know. All he, right. So how does that? So so quick answer. Because you've been mincing words here. Kylo redeemed, Kylo not redeemed. Well, the key is the third point, and that's the last point. All right, you have a third point. I, I do. I have a third point, and it's the last point. So the final part about redemption is that there has to be a change in behavior by the wronger. Right? Again, the, the small glimpse we had with Vader, if Vader is our model you know, the, of this redemption idea, the change was an acknowledgement that he was wrong, and then his action was he killed the bad guy. So he was the one that, th- that you know, Luke was going to die, essentially. Right. And not only did he save him, but in his act of saving him, he sacrificed himself in order to kill the ultimate evil. And so there was a change in behavior where he wasn't doing that before. Once the acknowledgement happened, there was a change in his behavior that we got to witness, and it was only a few moments long, okay? Gratitude for the second chance um, is it needs to be evident by your actions, okay? Sometimes the heroic act might lead to death. Sometimes uh, it leads to disgrace. And I'll give you, for example, here, Malfoy in the Harry Potter books, okay? <laughs> I'm going cross, yeah. cross-pop cross culture here. Well, just like the troopers from the, the current, yeah. current teaser trailer. <laughs> um, it all connects. I so get it. Malfoy has an opportunity to, I mean, just hammer... Harry Potter in uh, in his home, you know he was he was disfigured a little bit, but he still had the scar on his forehead. And, and Malfoy had the chance to say that's Harry Potter, but he didn't because deep down he did the right thing. He knew that he whatever, however much he didn't like Harry Potter, he didn't deserve death, especially a cruel death that he would have received. And so Malfoy saved Harry Potter, but as a result, he received some shame within his circle for doing so. So heroic acts can be redemptive, but not necessarily be uplifting, right? Right. Vader's heroic act resulted in his death, which was not, which maybe was for the best, I guess. It was a hell of a marshmallow roast, I'll tell you that much. 
<laughs> um, so <laughs> th- these moments of consciousness, you know, like Malfoy had and what Vader ended up having, you know, those were good and redemptive, but, you know, one led to a death and one led to disgrace, you know, and so those are not easy things to live with, despite knowing that you've done the right thing. But ultimately, there was an action behind the acknowledgement. And so for Kylo slash Ben to be redeemed, there has to be some sort of action to follow proving his his change in his ways. But what is that? Because we thought we... So given all your points, that could have been the act of killing Snoke. But it wasn't. It wasn't, because then he said, rule with me. He was still... He was still power hungry. He still wanted that. And Ray, to her credit, sniffed it out right away like we knew she would. Sure. Because we knew there had to be another movie. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so and so we knew that they I, at least I did. I knew that they I'm weren't joking. gonna go off yes. into the sunset, you sure. know, as as Kylo and, and Ray ruling the universe as best as they see fit in some sort of benevolent way. Can you way. imagine Ryan just twisting it out and like, sorry, good luck making the third on that one. Yeah, good luck, JJ, <laughs> sucka. They're holding hands, bro. <laughs> so anyway, you have to acknowledge a wrongdoing. You have to um, you have to be forgiven or you have to find somebody willing to give you that second chance to then, part three, show that you have changed. You have, you have a change in your belief or your attitude or your actions that is evident by the person who is willing to give you that second chance. So if he's going to be redeemed, that's how it has to happen. Now, the details, fill fill them in however you want or however you see fit or however JJ sees fit. But if it doesn't happen in this way, then it's not really redemption. It's hollow. It doesn't, it doesn't, it lacks the power that redemption and forgiveness can truly have. So, all right. That's a lot. It is a lot. And here's my problem with your whole theory. I wish you'd have thought it out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, <laughs> your 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 question, let me get back to your question. Now, does Ben end, does Kylo end episode nine redeemed? I don't think he does. We've talked about this. I don't think he does either. But it's okay for a bad guy to be a bad guy, was our last point. Yeah, that was that was okay. Sometimes bad guys but are just bad guys. But is he going to die on his back with a final word like Vader, or is he... You were right. You were right. You know, yeah. is he going to... Or is he going to go out... Uh, In a blaze of glory. Well, then that's... Like not even, John that's, Bon Jovi says. That's not even appealing either, you know? I mean, <laughs> I, I, it just depends. So, the fun part is, is we don't know, which is great. Yep. And we can only make up crap that... Is totally invalid, you know, invalidated by the first like three scenes or something in the next movie. So, <laughs> or the next trailer. The next trailer. Like, oh shoot! <laughs> oh man. Well, we were wrong about that yep. one too. Yep, there were seven Knights of Ren. Um, but uh, so no, that's that's fun to think about, and and thank you for delivering that. That was three good points. Yeah. I don't know if you didn't know about redemption, you do now. And hopefully, you made it through the end of this podcast to get there. Because we are at the end of this podcast. We are. We are. And uh, yeah. Don't yeah. forget, don't forget, if you would like to be considered for that Target exclusive retro figure set. Of all six, six. All six. What are they again? Chewy. Chewy. Han. Han. Luke. Luke. Leia. Leia. Vader. Hard to find Vader, by the way. And Stormtrooper. And Stormtrooper. That's six. And then if you want to count a seventh... Which we are not in this. We are not. But there is a Tarkin figure as well. There's a Tarkin it's out there, but Tarkin awesome. might be up on the block in a week or two. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We think about you guys. We think about you all the time. We do. We want you guys to have fun collecting the same kind of fun that we have when we collecting because, you know, like our little bio says, or maybe doesn't, I don't know, but we are collectors and this is ultimately for collectors and fans of Star Wars. And uh, we are doing this for you. Totally. Thanks for listening. So, um, retweet this uh, the link to the podcast hashtag retro hashtag and, retro r e t r o. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. I don't know, and uh, know. and we will we will see you soon. Uh, hopefully, we'll be up on video by summertime. I don't know what do you think about that, Josh. By summertime, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I for now, a haircut. 
<laughs> That's funny, Josh. Thank you. Nobody knows why. Yeah. Who's listening right Who's now? Listening? I'll be wearing a Black Series helmet. Oh, we should do a helmet episode. <laughs> Can you imagine the a heat? helmet episode. All right, let's end it up. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Hollow Chronicles. You guys are awesome. Sh- At Hollow Chronicles. Shout out to the BMB. Mace lives, 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 lives. This party's over. What you say, Mace? Take a seat. Oh, snap. For your own good, stay out of this thing. Oh, yeah, Mace. Mace talking big. If what you've told me is true, you will gain my trust. Mace, true.